Welcome back guys, it's the Tightwad and today I'm going to be installing this ceiling fan in my daughter's bedroom. I have just a plain old light fixture in here and we want a ceiling fan because it gets really warm here in the summer and we want a way to circulate the air. The first step in any electrical wiring project is to find your breaker box in your house. Search for the correct breaker, they should be labeled on the door panel and then turn off the power to the room you'll be working on. You also should turn off the light switch just for some reason. If for some reason, reason someone hits the wrong breaker, you have the light switch off which really does kill all the power to the wiring going to the light fixture. So it's a secondary precaution but one that I think you should always take. So Next, we're going to remove the existing fixture, and then I'll show you the wires coming from the ceiling, and we'll talk about what needs to be done to install the ceiling fan. This particular fixture is very easy to take down. You just unscrew the center cap, and this part lifts off. So I'll set this to the side. Then I'll unscrew the two light bulbs. And if your lights have been on, they may be a little bit warm, so you can use a damp rag to remove them with, but this one's fine. I actually see that this one is blown. We didn't even know it. We only had one bulb in here. And as always, righty tidy, lefty loosey, but try not to turn too hard because you don't want to break the bulb in your hand. It's always nice to have a drill around for this process because some of these screws can be quite long. I'm just going to loosen the screws, and then I'll show you why. You can see these screws actually have a keyhole, so I just loosen it, and then as I rotate the fixture, the whole fixture will come down to expose the wires. I'm going to remove the fixture and unhook the wires, and then I'll show you what kind of wiring we have. So I just rotate it clockwise, and it'll hang down. And you can see I have two wires connected and the ground. So the copper wire coming out of the top of the fixture is the ground. It's going to the green wire coming out of the ceiling. Then we have a white wire, which is actually two white wires from the light, going to one white wire from the ceiling. So I'll unscrew the wire nut here. I have disconnected my power and verified that I did not have power in the room. And I can simply pull that off. I'll do the same with the black wire. So I have two black wires on my fixture going to one pink wire from the ceiling. It's important to remember which wires go where. And last, I'll Take the wire nut off the ground, which again is the bare copper wire going to the green wire coming from the ceiling. And my fixture is now removed. So let's look at what we have in this box right here. This wire, although it looks white because it has paint on it from where the painter's painted, is actually pink. You can see a little bit of pink on the end here. We have the white wire that was hooked to the fixture. Then we have this one coming out, which has a copper wire that you can barely see right here and green wire here. Again, they have paint on them from where the contractors sprayed the ceiling of the room. And since we have two outlets coming down by the door, or two switches, this is a uh, three wire system. So it ha also has a black wire with just a wire nut cap and again, it wasn't being used on the previous fixture. The first step for this thing is to remove the mounting bracket from this collar, a decorative collar that's on it. So to do that, I have to remove a screw here and a screw here and loosen these other screws so that it'll lift out of the bracket. And once those two screws are out, I just spin it and it comes right out. The next step for this fan is to put the ball down rod into the collar and then thread the wires for the fan assembly or the fan motor through the shaft and out the top of the collar. They give lots of extra wire in case you decide to put a drop rod on your fan. <clears throat> I've already loosened the set screws in this motor assembly but did not remove them all the way. So now I will put this down in the hole and tighten my set screws finger tight being sure that the holes on the rod are even with the holes on the fan motor assembly. 
and I will just finger tighten them for now. Next, there's a pin that goes through the rod that establishes a, sure, a solid connection with the fan motor. The pin has a cotter pin, pin has a cotter pin on the other end that once in place keeps the pin from backing out. And you can now tighten up the screws to hold the rod in place. Please keep in mind that every fan is different and that's why you needed to keep the directions. One thing to keep in mind when installing your fan is that the bolts that may have come with your mounting, your previous light bracket may be too long. If I screw these all the way in, they're going to hit against the top of my box. So I went to the hardware store and purchased a shorter version of the same bolt. They were eight cents each, but it's a headache to have to run out in the middle of a project. So make sure you get a shorter length bolt before you get started. They're pretty standard. If you tell the hardware guy what you're doing, they should be able to tell you what size, but these were number eight. And I bought them about an inch long and they just screw right into the holes to replace the longer bolts that are there. All right, so the next step is to prepare the bracket. So I have the mounting bracket here. I'm gonna run all the wires down through the center and it should easily go up flush against your ceiling. And I will start the, the machine screws by hand and then I'll come back and tighten them up with the drill. So I'll get both of them started by hand and I've got fat fingers so this can be a challenging process. If you have a magnetic screwdriver some people prefer to use that for this step but you can usually get your fingers in there even if you don't have long skinny fingers. And I've gotten them both started, and now I'll grab my drill and finish the process. I'm not gonna tighten it all the way up on one side until I get the other side up. And then I can tighten up both sides. Your bracket should now feel secure with the ceiling. Give it a little wiggle. If it's not, then something is wrong with your uh, plate up here and you're gonna have to drill some screws into the stud from there. But as long as you got a good solid connection here, then you should be good to go. These wires are a little bit shorter than I would like them to be uh, to work with. So I'm not gonna strip them. Uh, you can inspect them and make sure they don't have any nicks on them anywhere, but they look fine. So I'm going to roll with it like they are. I'll have to strip the black one because you'll notice it uh, has the insulation all the way down to the tip of the wire. Since I'm doing the standard ceiling mount, I don't need 54 inches of these wires coming off of my ceiling fan. So I'm going to cut them down to about 12 inches each and I'm going to use that using wire cutters. Then I need to strip each of these wires. So now I have all my wires about the same length and they all have exposed wiring on the end so I can twist them with the existing wires in the ceiling. In this step, you will hang the ball of the ceiling fan into the mount bracket and pull the wires to the side. Seating the ball in place makes it easier to connect the wires without having to hold up the whole bracket at the same time. I've already connected all of the green wires together, 
because those are pretty self-explanatory. Anything bare or green goes together. Now we're going to match up the other colors. So I end up with white on white. And again, I'm wrapping right to left, just like I was screwing in a screw. And then I screw the wire nut on. So we have black to black. Wrap it. Put a wire nut on it. For extra precaution, you should wrap these with electrical tape as well. And then you see we're left with blue and pink. Since I have two switches, I have one switch for the light and one switch for the fan on the wall. So I do blue to pink. It's basically blue on the fan, whatever wire doesn't match up, and the whatever extra color you have coming out of the ceiling typically go together. But make sure you look online to pair, up, pair them up correctly. Um, if you only have one switch, then you do the blue and the black to the black. So if you only have green, white, and black coming from the ceiling, you do white to white, green to green, and then the other two go to black, which is the hot. So now, I would simply fold each of the wires up and into the ceiling bracket. Once the wires are pushed up out of the way, you can slide the collar up and put in your screws. This fan has rubber stop screws installed that must be removed before you can install the fan. Blades. So go around and remove all these before you continue. Most fan blades are reversible. They have a lighter side here and a darker side here. Before you go any farther, go ask your wife which side she wants down. These are the easiest fan blades I've ever put on. You simply push them into place and pull it up and there's a clip right here that snaps them into place. So you don't have to worry about getting all the screws set correctly. So again, I push it in and pull it back and it snaps right into place. When installing the blades, I prefer to use a screwdriver to a drill because it's a little more precise work. You see the little tabs here on the blade. They go in the slots on the assembly, and then you simply screw the two screws in on each side. Don't tighten one down until you get the other one started. Then go back and tighten them both down so that the blade is mounted flush. It's now time to start installing your fan blades. After installing one, go to the opposite side of the fan. These uh, tabs right here have slots on the fan that they fit into, and then the screws simply screw in on either side. You can pause where you are right now to check and see if your wiring was done correctly. You can at least see if the fan is working. So I've turned the breaker back on and I'm going to flip my switch that's supposed to operate my fan and you can see it turns on. If it doesn't turn on immediately, don't be disheartened. There's a pull chain that you need to pull to sometimes activate the first speed for the fan. Once you verify that it's working, turn the switch back off, flip your breaker off again because next you'll be wiring the lighting bracket. This is probably the easiest part of installing your fan. It's easy because there are two wires, black and white, and they go straight into black and white here. So black on black. And white on white. And 
and it just simply pushes in. And that part is wired. Next, you just fit your wires in and lift the light up. Making sure that your screws all line up with the holes. Now you unscrew the cap on the bottom and guide your wires through the hole in the globe and slide the cap back up. This particular cap has a center hole and another small hole for the fan speed chain to go through. And then you screw the cap back on and you are ready to test your fan. With everything hooked up now, I can turn on my switch closest to the door and the lights do work and if I turn on the switch farthest from the door the fan turns on. If you found this video helpful give me a like and a thumbs up. Leave comments in the comments section below. If you would like to see one of the videos displaying on the screen now click them and they'll open on your device. Hope you guys have a great day.